Hello everyone, this is the past competition element working group session live from Prague. Okay, usual business, not well. Please be aware that any IETF contribution is subject to some rules related to uh, IPR, so you should be familiar with them. It's already Thursday, so even if it's your first IETF meeting, you should be aware of them. Uh, if you need some specific uh, comments, we can point you to some specific documents if necessary, but most of the pointers here are, are useful. So make sure you abide by the rules here. Um, code of conduct uh, as well, we are a bunch of technical people. We are all equal. We are supposed to be respectful to each other. So if you believe there is some uh, misbehavior somewhere, there are people who can assist or guide you and trigger some processes if you really believe some people aren't respectful enough. So. The IETF make more and more effort to make sure that everyone feels integrated in contributing in the IETF process. So there are some ways to signal any situation there. So we are a mix uh, live face-to-face -face and uh, online meeting. So we're using Meteco. Uh, it also includes the queuing mechanisms, so I guess most of you should be familiar with them. Uh, there is the, the, the local app, which is useful to both uh, sign the virtual blue sheet, make sure that we have the right amount of people to make sure we have the right size of room for next time, and also to get into the queue if you have something to say at the mic. So don't forget to press the button if necessary to join the virtual queue that combine both remote and local participants. Uh, so we have Andrew who's in charge of taking minutes. Uh, the link to the note page is in here. So if you want to give him a hand or correct your name or add something that wasn't properly caught by him in the minutes, please feel free to, to, to collaborate to the page here. Uh, the more accuracy will be included in there, the better for uh, further uh, reference to the minutes later. Uh, so the queue already mentioned. And there's a chat uh, that you may access directly through Medico or using the Zulit tool. Uh, we are connected on, on it, but in, in case we miss some important messages, make sure that uh, they are uh, forwarded to the list because the, the, the mailing list remains our main tool to, to coordinate the, the work in the working group. Um, usual reminder, uh, at each step of the working group life, we expect people to express their views. Uh, the more we have people expressing their views, the more we can gauge consensus and decide according to the working group preference, especially during adoption calls, last calls, and so on. So uh, please don't forget to use the public mailing list. We know that for many works, people are using some private mailing list, which is okay, but we also need to sort of have some uh, visibility at the working group level to make sure that 
uh, everyone is aware of the progress on the works on make sure that we reflect the consensus within the full working group and not within a subset of people. Uh, reminder as well, we will come back to it later. We have the early allocation cut point uh, process, which is pretty useful. Uh, we know that usually takes, takes time before being published as an RFC. So implementation sometimes needs some cut points before it's published, it makes sense. So we are happy to help on request allocation of cut point before the RFC publication. Uh, the US process is, process is quite clear about that. Um, we have several examples in the working group, successful example in the working group. So uh, if you believe your draft or work in progress request uh, requires some gun points, please be vocal, contact the chair, and we'll talk about it on process according. The agenda. So it's been published for quite a while. So I guess no one is raising the hand to bash it, so we'll proceed with it. And we'll start with the usual working group status. So since the latest uh, IETF face-to-face -face meeting, we have one RFC published, which is the, which is the, the local protection enforcement. Uh, and we have two other ones, which are with the RFC editor, so hopefully they will be published soon. Uh, the binding label, uh, which is pending another document uh, linked to uh, SRV6. And uh, we have the stateful GMPLS, which is not uh, blocked on any other document, so it's a matter of administrative process to, to progress to RFC publication. Uh, we have another one which is with the IGFG, which is uh, the one mentioned before, linked to binding label and related to SRV6. Uh, there was a, a change since it was uh, moved forward. Uh, it simplifies a bit the, 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 the body of the document there. Um, we believe it will be able to progress uh, without any further flows there. So we are quite confident to publish this one on the binding one, depending on, on it in the near future. Uh, so as mentioned before, we have multiple documents that have uh, early IANA code point allocation. Uh, we have a, a wiki that tracks down uh, all these early allocations. So uh, that's uh, a reference page for all the um, associated uh, working group uh, information. Uh, several of them uh, are uh, renewed uh, regularly uh, because usually it's a one year term when we request uh, cut points. So sometimes it takes more, one, one than, more than one uh, full year to publish the document as an RFC, so there is a, a, a renewal, uh, which is a uh, well-defined process as well. So three of them were renewed quite recently. Some other will expire next year, although there is one which is work in progress. Uh, we have a charter in progress. Uh, John told us that it's on the IEG agenda for the end of the month. So we hope that uh, it will be uh, approved uh, soon and we'll keep the working group informed of the output of this uh, discussion. But we don't expect any showstopper there. Uh, no major shift in the working group uh, direction so far. So we are quite confident in uh, and I usually approval there. No new errata to mention, no new lesion, lesion neither. So we can move forward with the working group ideas. Want to take the mic? Sure, thank you. So let's go over the status of working group. Uh, if any of your documents you want to add something, feel free to come to the mic and clarify, especially if I make a mistake. 
Uh, let's start with documents which are in post working group last call. The PCEP Yang uh, document, we made an update, uh, but it's actually already working group last call is done and we are waiting for the Shepherd review and it's on Julian and Julian has promised to do this quickly and hopefully we will see this. Just one more update on this. There is a discussion on the net mod list as well, which is originated from uh, this Yang model. In this Yang model, in the operational state, we have a must statement, which we thought was okay, but there is a debate about how useful must and error messages are on a uh, operational database. And the general suggestion that I got uh, was that it's not as useful, so you could remove it. So maybe uh, with one of the action item which is pending is that in the few of the leaves which are read only, we will remove the must and the error messages. That's my current plan until uh, uh, if something changes in the net mod list, then I'll come back to the working group and notify. The other documents, uh, both of them are on the agenda, so we can skip and we, they have dedicated agenda time anyway. So the documents which are nearing working group last call, let's just have a very quick look so that working group is well aware on what the chairs are thinking and how we are progressing these set of documents. Uh, we have a flex grid document which has expired, but based on the status from the past meeting, it is ready. And I think uh, if anything has changed, the authors, please come and let us know. Otherwise, we, we will be we think it is ready to be uh, last called and we will request the authors to please resurrect the draft so that we can make progress. Uh, we have the document which were discussed uh, in the last meeting, uh, which is related to our segment routing, SR policy, uh, association stuff. They had an update, which is good. They removed some text which was discussed earlier, especially related to a multiple optimi optimization objective and constraint. This was the discussion that this is not part of the SR policy architecture, so it could be removed. So a uh, good thing is that they have acted on it and hope, hopefully we will be, we should be able to make progress in this document as well. This is an important one. It has an INA code point already allocated as well. So there are implementations as well. So hopefully we will make progress on this soon. Uh, we have EC optional, sort of stable, more or less. Uh, I think it's uh, ready as well. Uh, state sync is on the agenda, so let's skip that. And we have the color document, which we adopted, but we also, since it's a very straightforward document and there are, uh, 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 there are uh, implementations as well, we think we could also last call this soon. But since we all know we have an implementation policy, uh, every uh, working group document uh, needs an implementation section or they need to tell why it's not needed. So in this case, I'm sure they have an implementation. They just need to fill the section. So just a reminder to please do that. Uh, other working group IDs, we have uh, SR path segment, mainly a refresh, uh, uh, not much has changed. Things look stable. If anything has changed, please let us know. We have SR directional association, bi-directional association for SR, which is in the similar boat, uh, a set of documents related to PCCC, so, uh, in which we have the next one, which is PCCC for SR MPLS, looks stable. Hopefully uh, we should be able to move this quickly since we have a pipeline. Uh, I hope its number will come soon as well. And the multipath document, uh, in this, I would note that it was presented earlier, but the comments from last meetings are not, not yet handled. So please make a refresh so that uh, like the progress that we make in the working group meetings and the discussions, it's best it's reflected in the document quickly. That always help the discussions move forward. Uh, other documents, stateful interdomain on the agenda, P2MP, SRP2MP, which is also on the agenda and SIDALGO, which is on the agenda. So it's good to see a bunch of working group documents on the agenda so that we can make progress on them as well. Uh, we have one document which we took out uh, from an earlier uh, flow spec documents because IDR work was not ready. IDR work is making progress on F flow spec V2. Uh, there is an open issue that I have been discussing offline, but uh, no conclusion has been made, which is whether PCEP 
procedures needs to be updated because of the changes that are happening in the uh, flow spec v2 and one example of this is explicit order is possible to do in idr flow spec v2 but in our procedures we just have a set, set of tlvs and we don't specify any order among those tlvs so the question is that do we need that or not uh, as an author i'm i don't have a very strong opinion on this but if other people have please let us know uh path mtu ifit and uh, vendors are all on the same boat mainly a refresh and not much has changed uh, in the recent version uh srv6 yang folks uh, they did a major update they aligned with all the changes that were happening in psep yang they were comments on the list so thank you for that and thanks for authors to handle those comments as well uh we in the same boat we have uh, pccc srv6 there were comments from adrian and the authors have handled that and uh, uh, and the document is updated so thanks for that recently uh, adopted document we have our first beer document which is adopted and at the time of adoption we changed the name to beer te to uh, clearly uh, specify the name where the earlier name was beer only which was uh, not very clear so thanks to authors to take take care, take care of that there are comments that they need to handle a uh, one thing uh, okay uh, i think it's fine we'll can discuss that later i'll not take more time so working group adoption poll queue we have a long queue uh, if you have uh, any suggestions and any things any things have changed and you need for instance code points etc you can ask feel free to ask the chairs and give us the reason on why uh your document needs to be progress faster it needs to be a valid reasons and the chairs will discuss and see if we need to change the order as well because some of these documents have uh, are been there in the queue for a long time and we want to make progress on them as well and that's about it any comments okay then i'll change the deck and we'll go to our first presentation Uh, hello, here I will give the update of the uh, PC application for the native native IP network. Uh, so uh, the motivation is uh, first introduce an update for this uh, working group and the gateway bank from the PC expert and make consensus. So we, uh, if there is no any question, we want to uh, forward it to the IESC last call. Uh, here I just explain briefly the background of the solution. Uh, here there are uh, two RFC related to this uh, uh, proposal. The first is the describe scenario and the simulation result of TA within the native IP network. The other is describe the architecture of, uh, for providing traffic engineering in a, in a native IP network by using a multi PGP system and a PC based uh, uh, sensor control mechanism. This document uh, describes the uh, PC PCF extension and the procedure to practically build such architectures. Uh, here is the overview of the solutions. In, we, here we just give one, uh, some simple uh, topology, uh, but this, this solution is also suitable for the uh, for the more uh, complex uh, scenarios. The main procedure for the solution is, is three steps. First is the Built a multi or dual multi PDP system between edge router via the PC protocol and uh, advertise. Uh, the second is advertise different prefix via uh, different PDP systems, also by the PC protocol. The third is we will uh, steer traffic by alternating the PDP net, the route to the PDP net hub. So um, after the, all of the three steps, the traffic can be. Uh, adjusted based on the uh, requirement, QoS requirement. Uh, so here is the summary of the main update seen the working group last call. Uh, first, we changed the mesh table from the uh, we change change the uh, description uh, from the mesh table to the mesh flowchart. The second is we uh, add the status field within the BPI object to reflect the BGP system status uh, dynamically. <clears throat> Uh, the third is we change the encoding 
of the uh, PPA prop object. And the last one is we and the manageability consideration sections. Uh, uh, here uh, I will introduce the update more uh, in details. Uh, the first, uh, you know, from the uh, uh, the last, uh, <coughs> the, the left part of the uh, uh, this presentation, we, gave, we use the table to describe the procedure, but it is not very clear. So uh, according to the uh, uh, command from Jov, we uh, change the tab message table to the uh, to the message flow, the flow chart, and so it, and because the flow chart can reflect the time release shape among these messages. So this is just an example. Uh, the main procedure is not changed, just the um, uh, uh, just the diagram changed. So we, we changed all the three main procedures, uh, the BGP uh, session establishment and the explicit root establishment and the BGP prefix advertisement all have the similar update. Uh, the, the second update is the way we uh, change the result field within a BPI object uh, with the status field and the flag field uh, uh, and remove the tunnel uh, source that is in the IP address. Uh, so uh, I will explain the letter. <clears throat> the one tunnel mode is needed, we use the uh, local and peer address directly. Uh, and the newly defined uh, status uh, field can reflect the BGP session dynamically by the uh, piece, uh, mm, uh, by the PC, uh, PC report uh, message, and uh, we define the newly uh, extended, newly defined flag field for future uh, extensibility, and currently only one one bit is defined. <coughs> uh, so uh, the status field with BPI object can uh, reflect the BGP system. Uh, currently, we define the uh, f uh, file uh, status uh, to the uh, for be the first BGP sessions. Uh, uh, here I list give the list. Um, so uh, we we can uh, based on this field we can use the PCR report message to report the BGP session status or uh, or see uh, or, or seeing closely by the BPI object. Uh, here, just I want to explain the tunnel mode and the raw mode. Uh, uh, normally, we uh, we use the raw mode. Uh, there is no tunnel to traffic to for traffic. But uh, uh, if we use only raw mode, the traffic from different source to the same definition, same destination may share the uh, same priority path. Uh, so we can only control the uh, path mo moderate. We we call it a moderate traffic path control. But if we want to strict uh, con, uh, control the um, traffic path, we, we recommend to use the tunnel mode that says uh, when the traffic enters uh, the network, there will be tunneled uh, and the, the uh, traffic will be uh, uh, diverted to the uh, priority path. Uh, we will use the T-bit to control the selection. <coughs> Uh, the third update is the PPA object. Uh, this uh, update is mainly for the easier passer. Uh, easy, easy passing. There is no other uh, no other uh, change to the meaning of the uh, meaning of field of the every uh, every field within object. Uh, the last one is the and the main consideration uh, similar with other uh, document within the PC uh, for the. Uh, Discuss the, briefly the uh, uh, information or other other consideration for the management. Okay, this is uh, all of the update. Uh, so uh, we think it is uh, ready for the IS last call. If there is no other comment or questions, any questions? Otherwise, I have some. Uh, I'll start then. Uh, thanks for making the update. And as a shepherd, uh, uh, thanks for working on those comments. Uh, it's my duty to also do a redo, a recheck. I still feel there are some things missing that I plan to sit with you and try to resolve uh, this week. Uh, if we go back, like for instance, 
the main aim with this presentation was because there have been some of the some changes are a bit substantial so we wanted to make sure that the working group have eyes on it before we send uh, these changes to uh, to our ad where this document is note that it's post working group last call some of the changes are very editorial so we don't have to worry about them but especially when the encoding is changing and some this uh, process is changing i just wanted to make sure that people in the working group feel comfortable about this uh, some comments uh, that i had is this tunnel mode is still i feel like you know I'm, i'm not really sure that this is described very well and even if we should call it a tunnel mode so i will discuss with you and maybe we can get some opinion from other people on what's the right terminology we should use and anyway the document doesn't talk about this in detail oh, yeah. so this if we say that we have a bit the t bit is set then you are in tunnel mode uh, at least in this diagram you are explaining what it is but now the question that we have is is tunnel mo mode the right way to describe this so even in the working group if people have thoughts on this and have a better term please give suggestions but this is something which is still pending at least in my mind mm. and taking this example as well uh, i feel like you know merging status and errors is not the best approach like for instance if we look at 4 and 5 uh, both are saying bgp session failure but at the same time we are also including in the same field what are the reasons for it i think we could make this much simpler and have a error code carried separately and we have uh, in our definition we can make both status and error code so only if the status is an error then you can also get more information from an error code rather than overloading the status field just so that like you know things becomes easier for us in future if you are extending this so oh. these are some ideas that i have uh, it's my duty to discuss this further i know i apologize that i was not able to do that during this week so far but i plan to do this with you very soon so just to keep working group up to date on what the shepherds and authors have been discussing okay i will uh, we will try to add some description for the tunnel and the raw mode within the document and for the uh, error state error field we i think it is uh, we have considered to add it okay mm. yeah otherwise thank you for working on this thank you thank you stick for internet okay yeah next next okay you're next after not now no 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 uh olivier go ahead yes uh, just a, a few seconds um okay hello everybody so i will briefly uh, make a recall on uh, the pcep extensions for stateful interdomain tunnel so we just upload uh, a new release uh, since a long uh, period of uh, inactivity um please next slide olivier you should be able to have control just try if ah, it doesn't okay. work okay if it doesn't work then i'll do it okay uh, thanks uh, so just a, a brief history of a successful um, and success uh, previous version so since the adoption and um, taking into account um, the, the main comment we, we received uh, the main modification from the original version was the adoption of the binding seat uh, to transport the stitching label uh, within the, the pcep message Uh, release version 3 has a simple refresh so no uh, no more modification and for this new uh, release uh, we had uh, new uh, vpn uh, and intent based networking use cases uh, clearly showing that this uh, could address these uh, two use cases uh, we could also add uh, that it's uh, also fit the 5g uh, slicing uh, use cases and um, we also specify or the pc uh, could modify their local path uh, in this uh, interdomain uh, uh, chain and or we could enforce quality of services in particular or we could manage the, the tc um, the traffic class so just to 
make a brief recall of uh, how it works. Uh, here it is, um, uh, the distributed version, but uh, in the same draft, we also address the centralized uh, version. And um, in fact, uh, at the first step, we have a standard BRPC exchange as per RFC 5441 to compute the interdomain path will follow the 6831, uh, if I uh, remember, uh, for age uh, parent uh, children PC in hierarchical mode to compute this interdomain path. And then, like in the backward recursive path computation, we will set up uh, recursively. Um, uh, the interdomain end-to-end path. Why? Just because we need to stitch the different uh, domain. And so we need to first start with the destination domain, uh, requesting uh, the stitching label. And then we propagate the stitching label backward to the previous PCE that used uh, the stitching label to terminate uh, its local tunnel in order at the uh, peering link to correctly um, carry and uh, transport the traffic uh, to the next uh, autonomous system border routers with the stitching label in order for this uh, autonomous system border routers to determine uh, how to continue to transport uh, this traffic. And so the stitching label is this uh, MPLS label indication to stitch and to uh, transport uh, traffic from one domain to the next domain. And we will go this way backward up uh, to uh, the source domain. We'll proceed the same way uh, with a hierarchical um, parent children PC. Uh, in fact, the parent um, PC will ask the destination domain PC children and then backward go back to uh, the source domain but instead of uh, a direct pc to pc communication we go through uh, the h uh, parent uh, pc and um, what it's important also uh, to um, to say is that each domain is independent on how they enforce uh, their local part of the path so we could mix both rsvpt segment routing or any other technology um, to um, enforce to set up this end-to-end -end, uh, interdomain path. What need uh, to be common is the stitching label as a MPLS label at the boundary of uh, this uh, different domain. That's the only um, technology which is common between the different domain. So in terms of implementation requirements, we just need to request a certain number of modification in the current PCEP version. We need a new PCE capability to announce uh, that PCE is able to perform some interdomain behavior, uh, which is also some things is uh, like from uh, BRPC or H parent uh, path computation. We need a new PC association group just to associate the local path identifier to the interdomain identifier for management purpose when we need to modify the path, remove the path, or if there is some failure and PC restart or router restart uh, to associate and uh, coordinate the local part and the interdomain part. We need a new PC error message, of course, to manage um, what's happened in case of, of failure, in particular for the stitching label exchange. And we need a new flag in the T path binding object to convey the stitching label just to uh, request and advertise uh, this is a stitching label, uh, a particular uh, path binding label. So in terms of conclusion, we proposed uh, to, to extend the BC association group to interdomain just to uh, be able to exchange the stitching label between uh, PCE, PCE, and PCC uh, across different domains. And in order to automatically stitch or nest local LSP tunnel to form this interdomain LSP tunnel, while uh, we keep uh, each domain independent uh, on, in terms of technology 
an operator intend to use to enforce this tunnel. And in terms of applicability, so we are able so to mix the RSVPT segment routing or other technology um, to, to, to stitch this different part of the tunnel with target uh, use cases, which is uh, inter-domain VPN, data center interconnection, 5 g shisling, and intent-based networking. Thanks. If you have questions. Any questions? Uh, Olivier, thanks for updating the document. Uh, I think you have added some applicability, uh, which is always good to know where this uh, extension would be used. You remember there were a discussion in the past about error handling as we have one PAG document which extends uh, error handling spatially for inter-domain cases. We parked that document because we did not have any of the uh, extensions currently using it. And at that time, our thinking was that stateful interdomain, this document would be an ideal use case for that. So please check that and let the working group know what do you think. Right now, the document is parked, but if you uh, think that that's a useful procedure, we can always bring it back and progress this in the working group uh, yes, as well. Sir. Yes, thanks, Drew, uh, to, to remember me the, this part. Yes, uh, I will add for, for the next release, as well as we'll certainly add uh, an implementation section as we are currently uh, developing uh, this implementation in based on uh, Open Delight uh, PC controller. Oh, that's awesome. Always good to hear that you have running code as well. Uh, with respect to protocol extensions, uh, I don't see any big change uh, that happened. But uh, uh, I worry about some of the error handling parts, uh, the relationship between PC session going down. In fact, we have the next document, which is state sync, which is a synchronization between PCs. Is there any impact with that? So I think a little bit more uh, description, especially about cleanup, PC session going down, and error cases, we should think a little bit more and add it because I think the core part of how to distribute the stitching label, that part is clear, but the other error handling and just tightening up of our protocol specification is something that we should work next. Yeah, okay. It's uh, um, the, the main purpose of this uh, new PC association group uh, to, to help uh, in this case and agree we could uh, more detail our uh, PC or recover uh, inter-domain path in case of failure. Yeah, good point. Any other comments? The working group is very quiet today. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks. Yes, go ahead. Hello guys, Changlin from Huawei. On behalf of the authors of this draft, ITF PC state synchronization. Yep. Okay, so here's the quick uh, summary of the current state. This draft uh, was adopted in uh, 2021. And, and that, that the last presentation uh, was in that meeting, right? And and right now, I we think the draft is almost ready for the working group last call because it is well written. Yeah. And what does the draft describe? Uh, many, it describes something like a PCC, how to uh, establish a multiple session between the a PCC to uh, multiple PCEs and how to establish the uh, connections between PCEs, right? So uh, you also describe some need of the uh, mechani mechanisms between uh, PCC and PCE synchronizations. Yep. So this is the quick recap. Uh, basically, you can pay attention to two uh, aspects. The first one is about how to create inter uh, PCE stateful PCE CP session and synchronization. So you you can uh, uh, you can. Um, see the uh, extension of uh, exchanging the RSP states between PCEs, right? And the second part is about uh, uh, supporting the primary and secondary relationship between the PCEs, 
right? And it is clearly that uh, how to set how to set set up the uh, priority is out of the scope of this draft. It's based on, and it depends on your requirements, right? So, yes. What we have done uh, in protocol uh, in this draft, mainly we have defined the extension of uh, capability advertisement and uh, statement synchronization in both direction between PCEs, right? And how the, the mechanism of how to maintain RSP states from uh, multiple sources, and also uh, the 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 uh, the extension of using the RSP DB uh, version to maintain the the the, the latest state, and also the extension of priority setting and sub delegation. Yeah, and yeah, we believe that this draft is ready for working group last call. So if you have any comments, welcome now. Thank you. Comments? Going once, going twice, thank you. Thanks thank for your you. work. <laughs> and hopefully when we have working group last call, the folks in the room will support it. So we are moving to uh, the segment routing part of our topic, always an interesting part. So let's give to Samuel, Samuel's first in-person meeting. Hello, uh, I'm Samuel Sidwell from Cisco and I will be presenting as an algorithm draft on behalf of authors. Uh, so why we introduced the, the draft, basically uh, before the draft was introduced, there was no way to uh, to encode as an algorithm between PCC and PC, as an algorithm of individual seats. And uh, there was also no way to constrain the path with the algorithm by the operators, so there was no way to compute, for example, for example, path. Uh, the draft is covering all the algorithms, uh, all the other algorithms from IGP, so SPF, strict SPF, and Flexalgo. And our high level motivation was really to, uh, to uh, decrease the, seg uh, the size of the segment list as well, the, which is achieved using Flexalgo. So how we solved it? Uh, so to, to be able to encode the other algorithm in PSEP, uh, especially the the as an algorithm of injured or seats uh, we extended as a yellow and as a v60 arrow with algorithm field and the flag to indicate if the algorithm field is included or not then the second part is about the uh, about the as an algorithm constraint so we introduced as an algorithm plv in lspa object uh, with multiple flags to control the behavior uh, so uh, there is possibility to either just filter seats uh, that's most useful for algo zero or algo, algo one. And then the second part is about the flex algo part computation itself, which is following the rules from the from the IGP. So mostly done in the same way how IGP is doing the part computation for the flex algo. So for, for example, doing topology pruning based on the node participation, doing the topology pruning based on the application specific being attributes and uh, doing the path computation based on the flex algo, uh, based on the constraints from flex algo definition and also the metric type from flex algo definition. So for example, the metric type which is received in PC report is not really used, it's ignored and the metric type from flex algo definition is reduced. Uh, and to, to basically align uh, the, the metrics types uh, from IGP with metric types from PSEP, we had to introduce new metric types in PSEP. And that's basically the, the last extension covered in the draft, which is introducing the minimum latency uh, metric type for both for point to point and point to multi point uh, parts. Now to the actual changes which happened since last ITF. Uh, so basically version changed from 0.3 uh, to 0.5 uh, and uh, the code points were allocated for almost all code points which are covered in the draft, maybe except the SRV6 part because of the dependency on SRV6 draft or segment routing IPv6 draft. 
uh, which hasn't allocated the registries in Indiana yet. So because of that, it was not possible to allocate these RV6 related code points yet. And we reduce number of co-authors to five, uh, basically align with, with the requirements. Uh, there are this table, so no other change happened since then, no other comments were received since then. So um, I would like to ask the working group if anybody is aware about some existing implementation so we can, uh, we can track them in the draft. I know about one implementation in Cisco, which is done using vendor specific object and experimental code points. So I can add that one. The implementation will be updated uh, to follow the recently allocated code points as well. And then uh, if, the, if we will have all the required uh, implementations and if the allocation for the SRA6 code points will be done, uh, I would, I would li like to ask for the last call. That's it from my side. So any any comments, any reviews are welcome. Uh, regarding this working group last call after, I don't think so you need to worry about after. Uh, it, it, there is no requirement per se that like all code points needs to be early allocated, then only we can send it, it's fine. Uh, SRV6 document is also with John itself. So hopefully that would be done and then if needed, we will apply for it. Otherwise, we can just send it to the INA with some of them, some of them not early allocated. So don't worry that it needs to uh, be an after. Okay. That's, it can be done in parallel that's or not better. at all. That, that's even better. Yeah. Uh, but uh, folks who have implementation on this, last time there was a lot of discussion. So I was hoping there will be more open implementations for this. So please reach out to authors so that we can add it in our implementation section. So feel, feel free to really uh, contact me even directly. And if there is any available implementation, I can, I can add it to the draft. So uh, we think that it's almost uh, ready for working last call. No pending comments. Yeah. No, no Perfect. Pending, no. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. If there are no other comments, then thank you very much. The first comments gets a beer. <laughs> Thank you. All right, the uh, point to multi point policy. Um, so I, I don't have a, th there was a slide in PIM that I kind of presented to kind of show where the other drafts are at. Just FYI, when it comes to the replication segment in the spring, that one is actually uh, becoming a, a RFC. And that's the mother draft. So after that draft, uh, you will see a bunch of other drafts get becoming a last call and becoming RFCs. Um, obviously, we are working very hard on the PSAP part. Uh, we made some changes. I'm not going to go into the bits and bytes. I think you guys can read the draft. But uh, I'm going to go from high level what's happening here. So the first thing that is uh, happening is when it comes to the Canada paths, for, which they are very uh, similar to unicast, uh, for multicast, you need some kind of a global optimization because the tree is from the root all the way to the leaves. Most of the multicast trees, they kind of do global optimization of the entire tree, and then they do a make before break on the head end. And that's why when it comes to the Canada path, unlike Unicast, we added what we call the path instances under it. So the path instance is really the LSP or the tree itself. And previously we only had two path instances, but now we are making the number to be open uh, as many as you kind of want. Uh, the rest of the stuff are the same, so I'm not gonna go too much into it for the sake of time. Uh, but one thing that we changed because of the fact that these path instances are now n number is on the open object, we can actually signal the number of path instances. What that means is that some uh, implementations, they might not want to use the path instances. They just want to save it the Canada path so they can put zero in there. Or if they want to use the path instances, they can put you know, one, two, three, whatever the number is. And if you have a zero path instance, 
then perhaps global optimization is not for you. As you will see, you might have to do local optimization. That's the next slide. So that's number one. The second number is that uh, as it comes to the one of the RFCs, they were talking about different type of leaf types. There were five leaf type. I cannot remember the RFC. Uh, leaf type one and two, you could have actually add a leaf or remove the leaf. But leaf type five, you could have rewrite the entire le uh, leaf list. Uh, those are the only three leaf lists we're going to support for point to multiply in policy. And again, depending on the PSEP, you need to signal whether you can want to touch, meaning to add or remove one leaf at a time or a certain leaves, or whether you want to overwrite the entire leaf. Uh, that's part of the open message signaling as well. So I already kind of touched on this one. Uh, the fact uh, that if the number of path instances is zero in some of the um, uh, implementations to make it more closer to unicast, uh, then you cannot do global optimization of the tree uh, because you only have one candidate uh, path. And then really when it comes to the tree, if there's a failure, you need to do local optimization. You need to re-signal your entire uh, tree with the update message with the same uh, instance ID and the Canada path and you know, optimize the tree locally, uh, as you will see in the draft how that will work. Um, now, when it comes to the, again, if your uh, implementation does support multiple instances, because now we support n number of instances, you need to say which instance is active, which one is not active. Uh, so we actually added a bunch of pets into the, uh, the policy itself, that when you're downloading these path instances, you can actually specifically, specifically say via the flag which one is active and which one is a standby. So the next thing is, uh, obviously, when it comes to unicast, the slicing is big. You know, 5G, 6G, uh, all these uh, mobile backhauls, uh, they talk about the slicing. And tree seed is something that uh, is becoming very attractive in the broadband type of services when it comes to the 5G, 6G, IPTV, downloading uh, all these uh, wonderful shows to the, to the modems that are 5G, 6G capable. And you know, a slicing is very important. So um, we are trying to bring a slicing into tree seed. Uh, we are working to figure out whether a slicing is uh, a PIMZ, uh, a provider tunnel, uh, is running on a slice, or each candidate pad going to run on the slice. So that's beside the point. We'll figure that out. Uh, but basically, what that meant that uh, is that for the CCI object, we are going to use a segment routing CCI app object, which has all these flex algo and MTIDs in there to create different slicing for the candidate pad or the PIMZs throughout the network. So that's the next change we added to, this, uh, to the draft. Uh, last but not least, um, again, there is a lot of work going on. So you will see a lot of churn in the draft within the next year or so. Uh, right now, it's fine-tuned for MPLS. Uh, we are getting a lot of uh, attraction for SRV6 as well. That's why the replication segment uh, actually includes SRV6 and, you know, the PIM drafts, they all include the SRV6. We are thinking that maybe for the SRV6, we need a separate draft. Uh, this is going to be only MPLS just because we are under a lot of pressure to bring it into the, into the market and into the, the hands of our customers. So that's another thing to think about. Uh, but yeah, there will be a lot of changes coming up and cleaning up of the draft, the way that we add the packets and stuff like that. I know the, the, the chairs have poked me a couple of times. I do apologize. I didn't have time to clean that up. But yeah, that's it. Uh, comments, questions, please. Uh, hi, I'm Adrian Farrell. I'm mainly doing this to get the, the beer from Drew. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I, I wondered about objective functions. Uh, the, um, the original point to multipoint um, PCE thing uh, defined two objective functions 
uh, for, um, I think, shortest path optimization and the least cost, I think. Um, do you see, foresee any uh, the need for any other objective functions for, for SR or um, is, a, uh, is a point to multipoint tree a point to multipoint tree? Yeah, so that, that's a good question. Uh, this being a controller beast, uh, I kind of foresee that a lot of providers are going to look at latency too. Um, so I, I think that's going to be, so one of the issues that we are beginning to see a lot when it comes to the streaming, like Amazon, like uh, Apple, is that I literally seen this myself. Uh, you have two bars across the street from each other, and one bar starts cheering, and the other bar is like, you know, what what just happened? They they hear the other bar, and they have no idea what happened until one minute later. I mean, we've seen two minutes of delay uh, when it comes to the latency of some of these uh, streaming, and two minutes later they're like, oh, okay, somebody has scored, and they see what happened. So there is a lot of, uh, in the multicast world, there is a lot of business being lost because of this unicast streaming and the fact that nobody figures out the latency of the, uh, of the path of the unicast streams. So I, I would imagine, you know, latency would be another, uh, another thing that has to come in. But since this is a, I guess the, the short answer is since this is like uh, significantly uh, control driven, we can add all these trains as they become needed throughout the yeah i mean i guess that you know, the pce implementation can do whatever it wants for its computation and the, the question is that the the entity that's asking to create the path which of course may be living very very close next door to the pce or a long way away um it's what type of path does that need to to ask for. Anyway, we can we can look yeah, at that. Definitely. I mean, good Drew, we can, Drew definitely. can I have the beer in the uh, bar that gets the streaming with lower latency? Please? <laughs> the PC has noted your request. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, just a few comments from my side as yeah. well. Uh, uh, so uh, Adrian, I checked. It's shortest path tree and minimum cost tree. And of course, like that's just the way how we are computing the tree. You can also specify the metric. So you can have shortest pass tree and I care about the metric as latency. And thus this part is supported by P7, of course, available for SR as well. So my uh, comment was actually with the terminology a little bit. And I'm, I'm also not an expert in this. I wanted maybe Pawan or uh, folks from uh, RSVPT sites, because even in your document, you mentioned that you are borrowing the term instance ID from RFC 3209. And I got super confused when I went there to look for that reference. And even as a working group, we need to decide if we go back to the figure here that we are okay with this uh, candidate path. And then only for P2MP, having a concept called path instance one, path instance n inside a candidate path. I felt this a little bit icky when I was reading only because we already have a normal P2P SR policy, which also has a candidate path, but that uses segment list and a list of segment list. So I am not completely opposed to it, but I want us to make this decision uh, after thinking so that it doesn't complicate our further extensions in future. So if, if working group agree that path instance is clear, that's fine. What I don't understand is the reasoning that's given in the document is because of RSVPT, and that's where I got lost a little bit. So we should discuss this a little bit more. Yeah, uh, actually, to be honest with you, my memory going back like two years ago when we started this, I thought the instance we came up, maybe that's the wrong in the draft, I need to look at it. I thought we came up with the instance as part of the tree seat itself. I don't remember us borrowing it from anywhere, but good point. If yeah. that's in the draft, I'll, I'll definitely go check it out. We have it everywhere. Like for instance, even in our, this things, we use the word number of instance everywhere. This is what we are talking about. So this instance is the right word or not. That's what I'm worried about. Okay, but I, just to make sure that Drew, you understand. So the way that we identify a tree right now is tree ID, root ID, and the instance. 
understand okay all right just so it's it, i'm completely fine with the design it's okay. just the term that yeah, yeah that, that's fine yeah. we can definitely all right thank you and uh, just one more <laughs> uh when we talk about slicing i think let's be very careful uh, in pcep let's talk in terms of flex algo mtid that you want to support the the realization techniques that we have for slicing rather than say in our document uh, that like you know this is the extension for slicing just so that it's very clear that you are anyway using mtid and flex algo as a mechanism mm -hmm. so we'll focus on that rather than okay uh, like you know the marketing words and like you know we are doing for this use case understood okay thank you oh, we have one more yeah chunli from huawei uh, i i read the draft and i find it it is a little bit difficult uh, complicated for me so do you have any implementation to now oh yeah i uh... Both us and other vendors, we have implemented off the PCEP itself. Uh, no, this is the part that we are implementing right now. So until now, the implementation has been via CLI, and you know other vendors they have their own proprietary PCEP part of it. But now uh, this is the part that we are trying to get the entire through into the same implementation. Okay, so I would uh, recommend you to add a section of uh, implementation status. Yeah, okay. I mean, as soon as we start going to the last call, I definitely do. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw Adrian joining and leaving the queue. Is that on purpose that you aren't there anymore? Okay. Mobile? <laughs> okay, so now let's move to the last sections that we have, last three slides. So. Sean. It just it's one slide so <laughs> make it quick so this is uh basically to talk about the working group last call comments that we got on this draft um you'll note the, the title change but i'll get to that in a second um all right so the working group last call ended in september we have comments from andrew stefan and Cheng Li. i want to thank them for their comments because it resulted in some pretty big changes um the kind of consistent things uh, comment we got was like, hey, the name of this document is not specific enough. You need to say what you're actually updating. Okay, well, great. So I thought about that for a while because <laughs> I was like, well, clearly we're just updating the document. We don't need to say more. But anyways, and then everybody else said, hey, you need to add the security occasions for RFC 8253 in the security considerations document because it's the one you're updating. Okay, and I totally do that. Then I got Stefan's comments, and it took me a little while because he basically asked a bunch. I want, I want to thank him for his comments because it made the document better, I think. It was pretty much like, well, what are you really changing? It's already in A253. Like, what's different? And the more I thought about it, not much. There's a section in there that talks about, you know, connection establishment restrictions. And that's all we're really updating is like two bullets. So I put that in the title. So that's the, 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 in the title, the bullet up about multiple comments and make title more explicit. I basically put that exactly in the title, what we're updating and made the text about all we're updating is this particular section and we're adding two bullets. And so, you know, what are we doing? We're adding restrictions to specify, you know, what PC EPS implementations do if they support more than one version of TLS. So if you do TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3, you basically try to prefer the older, ver the, the newer version, sorry. And um, again, Stefan was kind of like, hey, you know, this, this 8253 document already says what algorithms to pick. Why are you saying anything? And he's right. So we just dropped it. And so the only other thing that's really going on is like what, what to do with uh, TLS 1.3's early data. And again, we don't want to use it. So just said, don't use it. So this document got shorter and more specific, um, so, which is great. But it changed pretty, uh, changed a lot. So the question for the chairs is, should you run another working group last call to, you know, revalidate that the, the changes actually are um, sufficient and you know address the commoners because it's it was a pretty big change. Um, and again, I think what happened was I got very fixated on trying to maintain an alignment with the net or the, the netconf document and completely lost the forest for the trees. I was trying to maintain alignment. And so when again when I got Stefan's comments, I was like, well what really changed? And then talking with Russ and Drew, basically we're like, we don't need to maintain alignment. We should do what's right for this group and for this document and hence the changes. So I guess the, the question is, I think I'm done. It could progress, but I, I don't know if the, the uh, working group chairs feel that it should, they should do it again because we made significant changes to it. It's Adrian. I'll leave the chairs to answer that one. Uh, I just wanted to say, Sean, thank you. Oh. Um, because 
you know, the, getting the security clue into a, a working group like this is, is really hard. And you've done the difficult bit, which is understanding what we're trying to do and, and applying the security. So thank you. I mean, you should thank the, one of the chairs who basically, you know, dragged me in here. But yeah, like I basically had to like get a different way of thinking about it. And so the working group last call, you know, worked exactly as it should have. I'm accused. So you have to take. <laughs> Well, uh, I think it doesn't harm to to restart a, a quick uh, working group last call if you feel like it. Yeah. We we can check that the working group agrees with the change. At least at least if we will draw attention on the latest change, maybe a, a short one will be enough. But there is no harm in doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so no if you feel like it, then I don't see any reason not to do it. So. Awesome. So the version that's in the data tracker is ready to go for the working group last call once you hit the buttons and send the email and stuff. So we're ready to go. So. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Leo, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will present remotely. Thank you. Uh, this chapter uh, analyzes the past com computation extension requirements for fine granularity transport network. Uh, can, oh, I can control it. Thank you. Uh, the transport technology is especially the TDM-based uh, OTN and MTN technologies are both moving towards fine gray hard slices. That means uh, uh, fat granularity bandwidth uh, uh, channels. ITOT has uh, uh, launched a series of recommendations uh, into this kind of uh, technologies called FGM, OTN, and FGMTN. The data plan recommendations are expanded to concert by the end of this year. So this document focuses on the requirements for past uh, computation and control and uh, uh, propose to extend the PCE to meet the factory transport requirements. Mm, this slide uh, um, introduces some development for the factory transport. It's background to meet the, some uh, service requirements for the vertical industry and dedicated line. Uh, this kind of service, they have uh, high requirements on hard isolation, security, and reliability. But with a smaller bandwidth, the bandwidth is less than the traditional OTN. Uh, for example, the audio flex, its minimum bandwidth is uh, 1.25 uh, gigabit. But uh, this kind of service, it may be uh, uh, several megabits. So the factory TDM technology can provide the flexible, uh, the minimum 10 megabits bandwidth granularity for the high isolation. Mm, the FCOTN and FCMTN, they have already a serious recommendation in ITOT. So for the future, factory transport channel con uh, connections, how to effectively perform end-to-end Parse computation and control will be an important topic. Uh, for the new technology, we think they bring some challenges for the part of computation. Uh, this figure will give the example of the network, how to use the FC OTM connection. We can see that um, the FC connections can be flexible um, set up between the client remote sites or between the client remote sites uh, to the client uh, headquarters. So the number of five gray TDM channels were significantly increased compared with the traditional OTN channels. For example, one audio tool channel can support up to uh, 900, more than 900 FC OTN connections. So for one device with the switching capability, maybe several terabits for one device, it can support five gray channel connections of tens of thousands of this number. The second challenge is, according to the service requirements, the factory passes may change frequently and dynamically. Uh, since one a factory channel may be 
um, provided for one certain CPR or Ethernet service for one client. Uh, so when the services start or end, or its bandwidth changes, or the service dedicated um, dedication node changes, they will cause the changes in the five TDM channels. Mm, so we think compared with the uh, optical networks, the factory transport network require a um, massive, faster, and more flexible path setup deletion and up update capabilities. And we think the centralized model of PCE architecture and PCE PA is suitable for this kind of requirements. Um, for the functions, they may include the functions, the factory path setup, the factory resource management, the path update, removal, and the service awareness and mapping to the channels at the PE nodes. Mm, so we think the PCEP <laughs> needs to be extended to meet these requirements. The path calculation request to reply update report that such messages should consider to contain some new information to specify the factory channel attributes. For example, to include the factory switching capability type, uh, server layer type, the factory uh, channels uh, they used, uh, they utilize the time slots information, and the client ID and uh, uh, maybe the factory neutrality path protection type and so on. And the protocol and the signaling should support the application to set up, update, remove, and uh, resource management such functions. Uh, that's all. This uh, draft is mainly proposed requirements, and maybe the specific extension will continue to submit in the future. Thank you. OK. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, so here, as far as I understood, there are some new data plane that are specified in the ITUT. So we were wondering with Drev how much of this work has been discussed within the CCAMP working group. And typically, what has been achieved using the PCAP extension so far was to align on GMPLS registries. So whatever we do here, we need to do it in coordination with CCAMP. So I don't know what is your plan to talk with CCAMP about uh, requesting some code points, switching capabilities or encoding types or whatever will be decided uh, with CCAMP. Do you have any schedule or draft uh, ready for that? Uh uh, for this meeting, we uh, we also um, we also to request the time slot in CCAP, but they didn't have a available time slot for presentation. But we are, I, we already set the draft to that to that work group. Thank you. Okay, so in that case, I encourage you to trigger a discussion on the CCAP list and keep the the PCE working group aware of the, the outcome of those discussion. Okay, I will uh, continue to discuss with that group. Thank you. Thank you. Any question from the floor, from the room? Okay, so thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Luis uh, from Telefonica. I will present a, 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 an initial draft with the intention of, of using the PC uh, for considering the precision availability metrics. So let me go for that. So the motivation is that some communication services uh, present performance requirements expressed in terms of service level objectives. And examples of that could be the, the network slicing staff being working out in, in these or the deterministic services being working out in, in that net. So it's just more than a simple uh, metric characterization. So it's a, a characterization of metrics together with thresholds that could be uh, passed and, and then creating degradation on the service. So um, IPTM working group has been defining these performance availability metrics. There is a, a draft that is progressing in the working group for, for doing that. And, and these uh, metrics are used for defining and monitoring the SLOs associated to a service. 
So uh, coming back to PCE, in, in the case of PCE, we can compute or select the paths based on metrics that can represent a bound or a maximum. This is uh, possible today with the definition of, of the metric uh, object in, in PCE. And in, in such a way that we consider that this bound or this maximum, somehow we are forcing the, or we are taking into consideration for the selection or, or, or the compute, computation of the path, that the, the value of the metric should be uh, less or equal to that uh, boundary. But this um, would not uh, actually apply to, to this characterization in terms of SLOs. So this is why we are somehow proposing to, to extend that uh, metric object in order to consider these pan metrics. Also because the, the metric that is uh, taken into consideration for the calculation, for the computation, represents the current behavior observed in the network. But uh, somehow we are forgetting the history of how this uh, potential path has been uh, behaved in the past. So this is why, because uh, this is why we consider that it could be in, uh, important to have into consideration these metrics. So um, just a few words about the, the precision availability metrics in, in these metrics. There is the definition, the, the concept of the violated interval, which is a, a, an interval in, in, in which uh, we observe a degradation of a given parameter. And this degradation of the violated interval is, a, a interval is against an optimal uh, threshold. Okay? Similarly, they define the severe, severe violated interval with, uh, in this case, when we pass the critical, a critical threshold. And from these two metrics, they derive uh, two ratios, the violated interval ratio, that considers the violated intervals and the severe violated intervals and the severely violated interval ratio. So different grades, let's say different levels of degradation in, in, the, in the service. So the extension that we are proposing is as follows. So we depart uh, from the metric object being defined in RFC 5440, which is what you can see uh, on the top, uh, on the left. And with that, uh, we consider the following to uh, character, or I mean, to consider as a new type of metrics, a PAM metric or precision availability metric. And then with that field that would be represented on the top uh, on the right, then I start defining the, the specific metrics that could apply to this PAM characterization. So we, for instance, you can see there a, a field a label as metric that could consider latency or packet loss or whatever. Then the, in the case of the, that this SLO follows a, a statistical distribution, then the indication of the statistical behavior and the function that represent that the statistical distribution, for instance, CDF or histogram or these kind of things. And then the units of the metric and the time interval units as well. The availability period in, in line with the artifacts that have been defined in this PAM, um, PAM draft and the tires that uh, define the statistical distribution uh, of, the, of the metric. Also, we, con we consider the violated interval ratio, the severely inter violated interval ratio, that would be the actual metrics that would be uh, uh, checked against for the computation of the path, and the different thresholds that could apply, even if we have the statistical distribution for the SLO, in, in terms of histogram, CDF, and so, that would be represented by the figure at the bottom on, on the left, or it just we are simply just considering an optimal threshold and a critical threshold that would be what you can see at the bottom on the right. So um, just for uh, illustrating the discussion of the histogram and the statistical distribution, so this is a histogram of different, uh, with different tires, for instance, here rep uh, representing different uh, latencies, mine less than 512, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, 0.512 uh, milliseconds, one millisecond, two millisecond, and so, and then what would be represented if we, uh, the, the samples that we can collect from the, metrics observed in the path exceed the, the levels defined in the histogram. So that would rise the uh, violation intervals and, and, and so. So the point is, is, if we can characterize the links and the paths in, the, in this manner, uh, at the time of computing the path, we can uh, check the uh, requested uh, violation interval ratios and sever viola violate, uh, severely violated interval ratios against this uh, histogram that is requested that is representing the SLO that the customer expects. So just uh, finalizing, the next step for us will be what well, released the 01 version was released this morning because we required to fix some missing information in, in 00 that is uh, have been also included in here in the presentation. And we would like to collect feedback from the working group, group to, to check if this is interesting or not, if uh, it uh, could be relevant for, for PCA group, and then our idea is to prepare a new version for next ITF. And that, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you.
So I see Samuel joining the queue. Maybe maybe just comment about the metric type extension. Uh, so isn't metric object of fixed length? Yeah, this is what I was checking as well. I believe it is. So it means that it can't be the metric object as defined in 54 or 40. It would have to be a new code point associated to that object, yeah. even if you reuse, you reuse the encoding there. Yeah. But it can be the metric already defined. Already existing, OK. If I understand in the document, uh, what they are saying is we define a new metric object type. type. So right now, they, this is what we have done in some other cases as well. But I don't think this is the best way to do this. Best way would be to have a generic sort of like an extended metric object type. And then inside that extended met metric object type, we can come up with like, you know, various different PAM types and TLVs so that we solve this problem in one go, rather than if in future there is another metric type that doesn't fit in into 32 bits, we connect another object type. Yeah. So we should solve this in one go, uh, this thing. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another you. another thought that I had was uh, I haven't read the IPPM draft, so maybe it's more better described there. But especially the use cases from our uh, part of the world, as in with bare, am I using this with SR policy? Am I using this with uh, some kind of uh, what network? What use cases where we usually see PC deployed? Uh, would this kind of metric? will be useful. That will give me a very good idea of, yeah, there is a motivation to do that. Right now, it feels like because IPPM has those metric, PSA should also have it. So instead, like in our world, how is this useful? That would be very good to have, add. OK, sure. So we will work on, on having that explanation there. Thank you. Any other comments? Olivier is in the queue. Yes, just one question. Uh, if I correctly understand, the goal is to address sort of closed loop mechanism with a possibility to recompute automatically a path or change a path in case of uh, violation. And why do you need this interval ratio and threshold? And why do you not directly recompute uh, a path in case of delay constraint, for example, are not met. Um, if, for example, uh, in the original request, uh, a path is asking for not more than 20 milliseconds uh, delay, end to end delay, you compute a path which uh, computed value of 12 milliseconds, and at a certain moment, because your network uh, parameter change, etc., you have some link delay that appear in the networks. Uh, current pass is upper of this constraint, 20 milliseconds. And then you could decide to recompute the pass. Why do you need this uh, violation ratio, violation in interval, and not uh, trigger immediately the path recomputation? Yeah. Uh... Good question. The, the point here is to have a uh, in, in, to take into account the historical behavior of, of the, the the samples that we have get in in a given metric. So we can start collecting. This is somehow linked with the closed loop automation that you were commenting before. So uh, if we can keep a, an historical uh, register of how the, the link the path has been behaving along the time, then we can check that with the ratios that can be expressed in the PC request um, recomputation. In case of problems, could be also possible as, as, a, as a subsequent step. Let's say once the, the path has been uh, already computed and so. But this would be essentially uh, linked with the, the idea of, 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 of uh, selecting or computing the path against the historical behavior that has been observed. So not not only let's say the instant uh, perception that you can get from a, a metric collected right now, but with, with the behavior along the time. Or in other words, uh, uh, two different paths that have the same metric right now probably have uh, have had an historical different historical behavior. So if the service requires on a specific SLO, I can choose between the, the more adequate uh, path according to the history. OK, thanks. Thank you. Last comments? 
uh, make sure everyone they have scanned uh, the QR code. I see that the number on the Meteco is less and I might be more people in the room. So just make sure that you have scanned the QR code. And any last words? Thank you for attending. Um, see you next time. Enjoy six minutes that we have given you back. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so is this the rooting area? Same room? Sorry, I really need a chance to be there as well. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be promote. That's for sure.